Alrighty folks, I'm going to show you how to do displacement mapping in Photoshop. And what displacement mapping is, is being able to map content to the surface, picking up the texture of the surface and having it basically go over the highlights and the shadows in the folds and the curves. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our image, here's a sweatshirt that we have, and I'd like to map something to this. So I'm going to try some text. I'm going to grab my type tool, letter T. I'm going to click and get some text on here. And going to select my text. And get some text. Select it. If I want to change the color, go up to the control bar, choose whatever color I'd like from my color picker, click OK. If I'd like to go through my fonts, I can run through all the different fonts. And when I'm done, quick and easy way to get out of your text editing, which is what I like, is command return. And that gets you out of your text editing. Once you've got your text, you want to convert this to a smart object. So go to your layers panel, right click on your text, and convert this to a smart object. That way we can go back and edit and change it once we do our displacement mapping. I'm going to take the type, do my Command-T for transform, and rotate it kind of along the flow of my uh, shirt here. Hit Return to set that transformation. I'm going to go to the background here, and what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to right-click. I'm going to duplicate this layer, but I want to duplicate it into a new document. So when I duplicate, choose New Document, click OK, and it opens us up in a brand new window. You'll see that it's all by itself. And I want to desaturate this thing so that I just get the black and white and no color. So I'm going to go under Adjustments, and I'm going to choose Desaturate, Shift-Command-U. And what it does is it just gives me a black and white image, completely desaturated. Now I'm going to save this and with this, I'm going to just call this my displacement map. If I spell it correctly, displacement map for my sweatshirt. And I'm going to save this as a Photoshop file, which we're going to call on in a few minutes. I'm going to close that file, coming back to my original file. Now, I'd like to take this type that I've put in here, and I would like to apply this displacement map do this to get this to conform to the texture and the curves of my sweatshirt. And this is only going to work on a pixel-based layer, so the type layer won't work. That's why I had to convert it to a smart object. Plus, being able to edit this as a smart object, it's the special sauce that's going to make this work. So I'm going to apply a filter, and I'm going to apply the distort and displace filter, and I'm applying it to my text layer. When I call up my displace, the defaults here are going to be 10 and 10. I don't have to worry about this content right here and these radio buttons unless my displacement map is going to be a different size than my image. And I know it wasn't because I used the exact image to desaturate it and save it. So once I get the displacement map dialog box up, I click OK. It's then going to ask me for that desaturated file that is going to use for mapping this to the sweatshirt. So I navigate to that, I click Open, and it's going to go and it's going to apply it to my image. Now if we zoom in really close here, you can see that it's kind of given me a little bit of the texture here around there, and it tries to match the texture of the image, but it doesn't look very believable at all. And the reason why is because we need to take this smart object layer here, and we now need to change the blending mode. So I'm going to change this to Multiply. Once I change this to Multiply, you'll see that it tries to map to the surface here with the shadows and the highlights. Now if I take my Smart Object here and I move this around, you'll see that by moving this around, it tries to blend that in with a displacement map, which is pretty cool. Okay? So I'm going to double click back on my Displace filter. I'm going to show you what these horizontal and vertical scales do. I'm going to increase the horizontal and vertical scale to 20, 
and then I have to go back and tell it, yes, grab the map, and it's going to give me a much more grainy mapping surface. Okay? So if this were being silk screened on here, this probably would be too much of an extreme with the 20. If I go back to my displace again and set it down to 5, being half as much as the original, the original, the default is 10, I set it to 5, again, you have to choose your displacement map, it goes in and it looks like it maps a little bit closer. Now when you zoom in, you just want to have something that's going to look realistic, as if this were printed on here. So, again, I can scale this up and down because this is a smart object. I can also go in and double click on my smart object and grab my type tool. I can edit the type, I can edit the color, and I can change any attributes that I would like with this because it is a smart object. And once I save and close this smart object, you can see that it comes back in and it's printed. Now, What's interesting about this is that you can see the lighter colors, I don't have that much of an impact on this because it looks like it's kind of saturated into the image and it doesn't really sit on top. Okay, and This is what happens with the brighter colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer that I've just done. So I'm going to go and right click and I'm going to duplicate this layer on top. So I have another layer on top here. and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blending mode of this to overlay or when a, anything in overlay here. I'm going to try overlay for now. And I'm going to cut back the fill here, which is going to allow me to make that color a little bit more intense and instead of having it kind of just blend into the surface here. Now, you can see that it doesn't really show up very well. I'm going to go back to the original layer and I'm going to go under my layer effects here and I'm going to do a slight little bevel and emboss. And the bevel and emboss is just going to give it a little bit of depth and a little bit of surface to it. So here I'm going to do an outer bevel and I've got it set fairly high because this is a high res image here. And do you want the bevel going up or down? I'm going to choose up so it makes it look like a little raised surface. Under the shading, I'm going to move the highlight over to kind of the top here because this is where I want to match my highlight because it's kind of coming from the top here. So I want to match my shading from there. And then I can adjust the size of this bevel and emboss. I don't want to make it look like it's raised like that. But I do want to have just a little bit in there just to make it look like there's a little bit of depth and dimension to that as if it was being silk screened on here. My highlights and my shadows, I can have a white highlight and a dark shadow. And these blending modes, of course, the white is set to screen, and the black is set to multiply, and I can control the intensity of each item, the highlight and the shadow there, to kind of bump that up to give a little bit of depth and dimension. And that's how I can displace that. Now I'm going to add a logo to this as well. So I'm going to open my logo up as a smart object. So go under File, Open a Smart Object. And then I'm going to grab my logo. This happened to be done in Illustrator. So I'm going to open this up. There is my image. It's going to bring it in as a smart object. And I'm just going to right click on this. I'm going to duplicate this layer, but I'm going to duplicate this layer into my sweatshirt. So when I click Duplicate, I don't have to worry about the color profiles not matching. Then I'm going to jump over to my image here and I'm going to transform my smart object. Do my Command T for transform and move my logo onto the sweatshirt right there. Okay, great. Set that transformation. Now, because this is a smart object, go under Filter, Distort, and choose Displace. And I'm going to keep my Displace settings the same as I had on my type. I'm going to choose the displacement map for my sweatshirt, click open, and it's going to apply that displacement map. I'm going to set my logo, blending mode, to multiply, and that's going to give me my overlay. So it gives me my content here. Now, if I like the bevel and emboss that I had done on the type right here, I can easily go down to my layer here where I have the bevel and emboss. I want to duplicate this. 
So I'm going to click on the bevel and emboss, hold down Option or Alt, and Option or Alt, click and drag that layer effect, that bevel and emboss layer effect, up to my new logo to give me that content. So this is a really cool way of going in and mapping things to the surface of your object. If I take off that secondary overlay that I did on that house, you can see that I get this that makes it look like it was part of the sweatshirt. And this is wonderful, one of the wonderful things of going in and doing displacement mapping. You don't have to worry about trying to fold these things over. It's going to use that mapping of the original surface to go ahead and put a logo on anything and pick up any of the textures and any of the implied curves and shadows wonderfully. And it's that easy.